This is the Tom Hartman Program. Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you and super pleased to have in the studio with us, with me, with us, Reverend uh, Barry W. Lynn, the Executive Director of Americans United for Separation of Church and State. AU.org is the website. You can tweet him at Barry W. Lynn, L-Y-N-N, or at Americans United. Barry, Reverend. Welcome back. Well, it's nice to be back. Thank it's you. nice to be back. There's Thank even you. a dog walking around Indeed, the studio. That's Look blue. at that. That's that's oh. uh, that's Louise and my. Uh, oh. Well, Louise is arguably our our, our new dog. That's good. Um, I like dogs. Yeah. I'm a dog person. I like dogs too. I've I've had dogs since I was born, and, and cats too. We we live a, a dog and two cats on a little boat down here. And anyway, uh, <laughs> this is not about us. The boat. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, the Supreme Court said uh, if if a uh, religious institution wants to spread toxic tire waste on their uh, uh, playground for yep. their children, uh, and the federal or the state government is already giving it away or funding yep. you know uh, purchases of it uh, for public schools, uh, then they have to give it to churches. So what's wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with this is the school involved in this case is a direct component of the church, the Trinity Lutheran Church that uh, brought this lawsuit, they had been turned down not because of some federal constitutional principle, but because of a state constitutional principle that is found in roughly 39 state constitutions. It's very specific. You cannot give anything of value, not money, not shredded tires, not rubberized playgrounds, to any ministry or mission of any religious entity. And this was a good decision made by many states uh, around the time of the Civil War. And uh, they picked up on it. And now this decision begins to erode the principle that if your state constitution protects against the distribution of money to religious groups, and therefore may violate your conscience, this cuts back on it. Now, there's something called footnote three. Footnote three is one which everyone didn't agree with in this uh, seven to two decision yesterday because it said this case is only about giving tires to playgrounds that are parts of church schools. It sounds now, like the caveat in Bush v. Gore. This, this thing this stands alone, stands but, alone. but it has been cited now three times. I of believe. course, of course it has. And this will be cited again and again. And in fact, Yesterday, they also sent back two cases involving similar constitutional provisions. One is a case of ours in Colorado involving school vouchers, and the other is a case in New Mexico involving loaning textbooks to private religious schools. And the decision of the New Mexico Supreme Court was, it's in our Constitution. We can't give something like this to religious schools. When you think about it, Tom, it's all about conscience. If you want to give, I want to give money to a charity, I want to give money to a religious charity, we do it. But we don't expect that every taxpayer in the state we live in is planning to have to do the same thing. This is like, it's like a church tax, which of course is abhorrent in the whole history of the United States. Yeah, this was the huge debate when Massachusetts exactly. was to join the union. And they had a church tax. Yes, they did. And, and uh, Madison said, you know, get rid of it if you're going to join the, the, the... Absolutely. And, and uh, they were very upset about that. No, they were. Um, but, Rightly but, so. But, but that's also an argument that, that right-wingers make, yeah. and sometimes left-wingers make, particularly yeah. during the Vietnam era, sure. about, you know, I'm not going to pay my taxes because the money's going to Vietnam, or I'm not going to pay my taxes because the money's going to support an abortion clinic, or I'm not going to exactly. pay my taxes because I don't agree with, you know, what Mitch McConnell did last exactly. Thursday. Um, whatever it may be, the, that argument has been largely eclipsed by the, okay, you know, the public good and, you know, we do what we do and, you know, you may not like the Pentagon, exactly. but you're going to pay for it. And, exactly. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, isn't I mean, there a more cogent argument that we can make? Well, I mean, it's, it's tough because everybody thinks they want to be able to pick where their tax dollars go. But unfortunately, we don't have that system, and we're not about to start one. But this one transcends that. This is a core principle. In America, we treat religion differently. In a few cases, we give it special privilege, 
special protection. But in most cases, we say you can't promote religion with tax dollars. You can promote anything else. You can promote the love of dogs. We're talking about dogs or love of uh, this substance I'm drinking from across the street. It's but you strange can't. Pink stuff. It is very strange, <laughs> but there's a backstory to it. Okay. But anyway, but you can't fund religion. That's the one thing that's treated differently, not because of some Supreme Court decision or some kind of liberal justices, but because it's built into the fabric of the First Amendment itself. Well, and let's take this back, you know, first principles. Um, Jefferson quoting Locke back in, in the, in the in, I think this was in like the early 1770, 72, 73, you know, when he was, uh, well, it might have even been before that when he was a Virginia legislator, um, uh, basically said, historically, men have been, uh, you know, humans have been, have been conquered and and I forget the word that he used, but led, shall we say, um, by one of three groups. Mm. Warlords, right, and, and uh, uh, theocrats, yeah. or the rich. And we are setting up a new form of government where none of these three groups will dominate our lives any longer. Exactly. We are going to do away with the oligarchs, we are going to do away with the theocrats, and we're going to do away with the warlords. And now we've got in the warlord department, most of our money is going to the Pentagon. In the theocrat department, we've got the Supreme Court decision right. yesterday. And in the rich department, we've got, you know, the, the, well, uh, story, <laughs> GOP donors threaten Congress. No tax cuts, no money. Right. You know, it's about exactly. a, a Republican billionaire uh, <laughs> by the name of Deese, Doug Deason who says to, uh, to Kevin McCarthy, you know, my checkbook is closed until well, you guys give me a tax cut. Oh, well, man. And, and, and it's like we have we have stepped into Thomas Jefferson's worst nightmare. How yes, the hell did we get here? We got here because we uh, apparently weren't taking enough attention, weren't paying enough attention to what we were doing. And I remember you and I talking on your TV show not too long before the election about the fact that uh, you and I were both fans of Bernie, uh, but unfortunately he didn't get the nomination. And then, uh, frankly, uh, I, I certainly did, and I... I I think you said you were planning to vote for Hillary. Yeah, a lot absolutely. of people didn't. I, a lot I of people paid didn't. for Hillary. I know. Well, I did the yeah. same thing. But the point is, a lot of people said, no, 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 she's not perfect either. Well, we've moved oh, well that's... beyond needing somebody that's perfect. We need somebody who's not going to cut health benefits for 22 million people. We're right. we're in a stage where we need to take seriously who gets appointed to the Supreme Court. The only good thing that happened yesterday is that Justice Kennedy who's a conservative but has not lost all of his common sense, did not announce, as in general is the rule, didn't announce he was leaving the court on that last day of the session. He remained silent. Has it, has it uh, in, in recent, in modern history, has there ever been anybody left the court without doing it on that last day of one I of the think that uh, I think that when Justice O'Connor left, as I recall it, it was later in June when the oh. last session was. But I think over the Fourth of July weekend, she let it be known she was well, leaving. Was, but she had a special circumstance. She I mean, did. her husband was, her husband was, was sliding very, into Alzheimer's yes, really rapidly. Absolutely. So that, but that's the only case in modern history that I can remember. So, in other words, odds are we'll have Justice Kennedy for another year. At least one more term. And I thought, you know, with Neil Gorsuch, his uh, protege, his law clerk being on the court, um, he might decide, well, he can retire. But I think that he recognizes, and, and if you look at Gorsuch's uh, decisions yesterday, a firm supporter of the idea that money can go to churches, uh, he dissented and said we, they should have stayed the entire immigration order, which is at its root a religious issue. It's right. taking Muslims and saying, if you're in these six countries, we're not letting you in. And if you're a Christian in those countries, come on in. So it has two religious components. And then uh, the third thing uh, they did yesterday was take the a case called Masterpiece Bakery, which involves a baker in Colorado who refused to bake a cake not for a wedding of two men, but a celebratory event following their marriage in another state. So this wasn't even having to deliver the cake to the wedding ceremony. Mm. This was just a party afterwards. And this is the same guy that during depositions that were taken by the ACLU in Colorado, this guy said he, he, he was asked, did you make any cakes for uh, any other uh, groups? And he said... I did make a cake for a dog 
wedding ones. So apparently this sudden interest in the nobility of, uh, of weddings, uh, he hadn't lost it during the time he was baking a cake for a dog's wedding. Yeah. Now, you, which is bizarre. <laughs> yeah, no, it um, is bizarre. You, you said that yesterday the Supreme Court rejected basically two religious uh, cases. And it sounded like you said that in both those cases, the religious institutions had lost in the lower courts. Did the, did the Supreme Court's rejection of those appeals then mean that those rejections of their demand that they get state money failed? And if so, that seems to contradict this Trinity Lutheran case. Yeah. What does all that mean? No, I think what it means is they didn't want to do anything that was too broad, too shocking. They wanted to send these cases back with the hope that they would eventually return to the United States Supreme Court, perhaps when someone else was gone, like a Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So we do risk the possibility that this president, who is, in fact, was, in fact, very different from Hillary Clinton, will now be able to appoint two people. If Kennedy leaves, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I, I, I saw three. her on the court. Yeah, I mean, she, he would appoint three people. Gorsuch, we know, is at a minimum worse than Justice Scalia was. Um, and he proved that yesterday. And, and here we are with the possibility of Kennedy leaving in one more year. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she looked in pretty good health uh, the last time I saw her do an oral, uh, at an oral argument, but uh, she can't live forever. Are we you sliding into that. theocracy? Well, I think we are. I think we're sliding there. The, there's a kind of, uh, it was no apocalypse yesterday, but... Doesn't Very theocracy dark. typically balance oligarchy? I mean, don't the oligarchs use the theocrats and vice versa? Oh, of course they do that. And, and if you look at the amount of money that is spent by the religious right, the big organizations to promote their agenda, um, it's just they're in lockstep with some of the wealthiest people in this country, the wealthiest organizations in the country. So church and state at the highest level are already merged. The people who give the most money tend to be the people that are um, happy to uh, engage in political work right through their churches. Churches aren't supposed to do that, but the president wants to do away with that. Neo-Calvinism. <laughs> yes, it is. This is the Tom Hartman Program. The Reverend Barry W. Lynn, Executive Director of Americans United for Ch Separation of Church and State, AU.org. Tweet him at Barry W. Lynn. Thank you. Thank you.